And that comes back to my other point of, okay, let's go back to center. Whenever, um, like if you, you speak to founders all the time who are lost, like myself, I'm still kind of lost trying to figure out what I'm doing. And um, my girlfriend asked me this question. She's like, what do I do? And I thought about it and it kind of just clicked. I'm like, you love consulting. You love speaking to people and you love, you love consulting by, with people and getting consulted by people. That is your center. If you don't know what to do, go back to center. My center is podcasting. If I don't know what to do, if I am kind of lost, I'm in a rut and I don't know like what my next career move is, I find someone to talk to on a podcast and I keep creating content. That is my center. Um, so how important is it for like founders and people who are kind of lost to kind of have that bedrock of a center, finding your center? Yeah, I love that premise. I think um, I can take that in a few ways, right? I think it's absolutely, I'll, I'll, I'll come off that like core idea. I, I agree with it, right? I think it's really important for founders to, one of the things that we guide founders through if they haven't done it is an exercise just around founder fits. Like what are you, um, it, you know, it could be this like Ikagi, Ikigai like, idea. It's cousins to that. It's just our version, my own version of that where it's like, what's like gonna really work for you, right? That's both gonna work for what you like to do, what you're good at, what the world needs. Again, that's the Ikigai model, right? And so I think that's hyper important. And it's and it's sometimes tough because what you want to do isn't always what the world needs. And so you have to like either get creative to find the middle ground or maybe maybe compromise a little again, right? Like the world's there's a little un, <laughs> unforgiving sometimes. You don't get to do what you want to do all day. So I think that's hyper important for founders to figure out because it's the foundation for what they do entrepreneur. It's really a foundation for what they do in anything, but definitely entrepreneurially because as an entrepreneur, you don't have the natural constraints. You can kind of pick what you want. The constraint is the market. The constraint is what's going to work. Right. But you have your freedom to figure, figure it out for yourself. But it's your job to figure yeah. it out and you have freedom. So if you want to go try and sell courses about underwater basket weaving, go for it. Right. It might not take, but you, you're free to try. And so a lot, a lot of what we do with entrepreneurs is um, what I do with entrepreneurs. One is like to get that center. If we don't have that center, frankly, everything else is going to be a lot harder because we just don't have like a core, like there's not that core foundation. So let's get that check. Right. Um, that helps us just like make some easy choices. Like, do you want to build a big business or a small business? Do you want to build a huge team or a small team? Right. Do you want to, which area do you want to build in? Like what, and what skills do you have that you should lean into? So in some ways I can help get a founder to their next business idea just from asking like, who are you and what do you want and what are you good at and where do you have expertise? And I can just draw a box and be like, go, there's a business in there, go find it. That happens all the time. Um, the other thing that I, and I say a lot related to like, less related to just the idea of finding that center and having it and knowing it is just recognizing, um, most bus businesses fail because they run out of money. Kind of silly thing to say because that's not a cause, that's an effect, <laughs> right? Other things happened to make you run out of money, right? Um, but one way to not run out of money is to keep your job <laughs> and to build while on the, uh, on the side, the idea of a side hustle, right? I think, I don't know, I'm speaking to the audience, the world here, everyone probably has a different conception of side hustle. I, I, I'm going to pause you real quick. Yeah. I, I despise the term side hustle. I, I, think I love it, but I, I think we probably mean the same thing. You know? Right, like, but like, cause <laughs> there's, there's no such thing as a side hustle. A side hustle is a main hustle. The, the, the fact that side hustle, no, this, this podcast isn't a side hustle. Yes, I have a full-time job that pays me and gets necessities, but I arguably spend just enough time on this, my side hustle, as I do my full-time job. And with the goal being of making it my full, full-time job. So, so the terms, I, the terms, especially today, because in order for a side hustle to be successful, you got to go all in to even make a dollar. So the term side hustle, I think, needs to be retired. It's a terrible term. But so that's continue. a very fair premise. That's a very fair premise. I think I would love to get to the world where working while having a job is not anything less than, right? right. And we can call it what it... I think it's important to give people space and cover to say working while having a job is not bad and it's not you know it, you're it's uniquely it's american <laughs> well it's where where i came from um in the world of venture capital there's a little bit of a stigma where 
if you're not all in on your startup idea, you're not taken seriously. Right. right. So it's definitely a, a, there's a stigma and, and it's, we're slowly unwinding it because everyone realizes that's like hyper privilege. Like you can only go into a business all in if you have a freaking trust fund. Right. right. Um, or you just sold your business and you're already independently wealthy. Right. So I think we're all realizing that entrepreneurship is way too big to just fit for people who can like basically play with play money. Right. Yeah, who, who, who can, who can play with house money, who can afford it. So, yeah, yeah. so it should be the de facto way of building that you keep a thing that keeps your lights on, that keeps you sustainable, that basically you can go build a business without, um, without it making money for as long as it takes before it makes money. That is 100% the best way to start most businesses, right? Um, the, that, whether it's going to be a venture back business eventually, whether you're going to keep it a startup or a, rather a small business, like a bootstrap business, it just does not matter. The best way to do it is to give yourself optionality because everything will take longer than you think. It will not happen overnight. You absolutely need to chew some glass and go through the tough parts to get there. Now, that's not to mean like uncritically go blindly in a direction. Definitely pivot, think long and hard about things like get, go to day one, get the right st- people around you to make the right moves and calls. But the thing that kills businesses is that fa- it's really just founders give up and founders give up as much as often because they run out of money. Sometimes they give up because they're burnt out, which is an equally big, different problem. Um, but if you as a founder cannot give up, there is definitely a set of cases where that's the wrong move. And man, that, that actually is a separate topic and very much is painful to me because if a founder is build, pushing a boulder uphill, I like, I, I, as gently and lovingly as possible, want to say, kill this business. <laughs> Stop it. Do something else. No, I, think, I think that's great advice that honestly isn't given enough. Like, not nearly enough. There, not like, nearly a lot, enough. A lot of it's, advice in general can just be, kind of be platitudes and you need to do this. You just, you just got to work harder. Sometimes someone just needs to be slapped in the face and go, your idea is bad or your idea is generic or your idea needs to be reworked a lot. It's don't give up, but just stop. So the way, the way, else. the way I say it, well, well, well said, Will, because, because the way I say it is, it's not that like your idea is bad and give up. It's change course. Yes. And change course could mean just pivot the business. It could mean rethink a lot of your assumptions. It could mean stop go get a job, go build up your war chest, go, frankly, have some new experiences, right? Like one of the, building a startup is like executing on like the sum of your insights that you lived in the world. But the second you like go to jump in and solve your problems, you've stopped doing that thing that got you those insights. Like this is what happens. This is where most startups should come from. You either either work in a job, in a field, in an industry, and you do it enough and you're like, I hate doing this. This part of my job sucks. <laughs> Let me solve it. Right. And because I've been doing it for years, I know why it sucks. I know who's the gatekeeper. I know exactly how to fix it. That's a business to build. The other thing, of course, is like you, you're a gamer, even gaming forever. You realize discord is not the right way to get 10 people to talk during a game. You build that product. Right. So it can come from your personal or your professional life, but it comes from this lived experience. Right. So it's not fair to say technically that when you start building a startup, you stop gaming and you stop getting those insights, but you, your brain switches, you go into like execute mode versus like learn mode. Right. So it's very freaking fair to say, like, after you've been building for a few years to be like, life is long. Let me say that too. Life is way longer than most young people would let themselves believe. So just stop, <laughs> take a step back, go make some money, have some fun, go on a vacation, find some new problems have a hobby, work in a job, go deep, network a freaking lot, right? Let's bring that back. And two or three years later, you should have a much better startup idea, right? I think people should go in these two or three year waves where like two to three years to build that three years being the outer edge where if it's not working, you can feel like you really shot your shot. You put everything into it and then you sunset and you switch back and you go work for two or three years. Right. And now you're like, just keep building up your notebook of problems and things to solve and then take a shot. Right. And then life gets in the way. So you might have to work for six years or 10 years because you have, who knows, right. Kids, whatever. Right. Like all the things are going to happen. 
let's just like put all that on the so we got into this conversation because we said side hustles are a bad name for a very good thing <laughs> right it's a silly it should not be like called the side hustle it should just be called work building with a job right um where the job should minimize that's the goal the goal is to make the job less and less important to you to the point where it's not important to your revenue your income it's not important to your identity you just quit yeah. and now this thing is here i well, want like, everyone to have that experience it's also like the term the term hustler like oh you're a hustler it's just like, oh, it's like, well, thank you. But also, let me, let me break that word down for a second. So like, I, like, the, like the fellowship, right? I obviously, once I got the fellowship, I texted my boss like, hey, by the way, going to need to make a few things here. And she was, one, amazingly proud of me, very happy cool. for me, very supportive, which is cool. oh, so weight off the shoulders. Good vibes. But yeah. she's like, you know, you work hard and you're a hustler. And I go, ooh, hustler. Because the connotation is... Well, what is a hustler? A hustler is also someone who's kind of scamming people, right? right a hustler is right. someone who works. A hustler can also be someone who works really hard to go nowhere, just to stay still and kind of stay where you are. So aside hustle and hustler, it's just like you work really hard, but almost it's kind of like you're working really hard at the wrong thing, Will, as a hustler. I, I, I'm a big fan of people working smart. I mean, yes. again, it, it, this is where advice is annoyingly, it's generic and wrong, right? Like, Gary Vee is one of our partners and his whole thing is very hustly and very like put in the work and yada, yada, yada. And that's right for a lot of people. It's obviously right from a certain context. Like you do have to just work. You shouldn't overthink things. You should just do it, ship it, get it done. Right. That is all true. And it's gotten rolled up into the hustle culture. Um, after you've done that, or as you're doing that, you do need to figure out how to be smarter. <laughs> Right. And it's like, so you hustle and you go to garage sales and you flip things at some point you should figure out how to like only go to the garage sales that have the good stuff. Right. Or upgrade from garage sales to like estate sales to like storage unit sales or whatever those are. Right. Like at some point you got to go from hustling to smart. Right. And that's, um, again, again, a little bit of like my philosophy at day one It's yes, you're going to have to do this stuff. Like I said this morning, basically, this is the, a four week period to not overthink things yourself because you have a lot of other people around you to think with you and for you. So you go do a thing. All of a sudden you have four different people giving you their perspective. And instead of overthinking it yourself, you're like, Oh, I was now, now I know why that was or wasn't a good idea. Right. But, but, be, but you're just infinitely smarter and further along because other people told you, plus you just lived it and now you know how to do it again, or you do know to do it again and now you double down. 